Questions 21 through 25 on the 2012 Grade 8 AMC 8. Marla has a large white cube that has an edge of 10 feet. She also has enough green paint to cover 300 square feet. Marla uses all the paint to create a white square centered on each face surrounded by a green border. What is the area of one of these white squares in square feet? So we have a situation where I'll just draw one face of the cube. And she wants to create a certain scenario, I guess, where there's a white face inside and then the rest is all shaded green on each of the six faces of the cube because remember a cube has six faces. So let's proceed with this question. The side of the cube is 10. That's given in the question. The side of the cube, I don't know. That's what they want me to figure out. Okay, so the shaded region is obviously 10 times 10 minus x times x, which is x squared. But remember, the, the cube has six faces, so I have to multiply this whole thing by six. And this is the green paint that represents all the green paint. And they tell me in the, que in the question that green paint is 300. So this is the algebraic equation I have to solve. So this is 100 minus x squared and divide through by 6 and you get 50. Put the x squared on the other side and you get 100 minus 50, which is 50. What is the area of one of the white squares in feet? Well, the area of one of the white squares in feet is x squared. And that's what we just figured out. So the answer to number 21 is 50, which is D. Let R be a set of nine distinct integers. Six of the elements of the set are 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 14. What is the number of possible values of the median of R? All right, well, let's uh, discuss this. We have 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, and 14. Now, these are just six of the numbers. There's nine in total. So I'll, ret I'll let the other three be A, B, C. I don't know what those numbers are. I'll just call them A, B, C. And I've got to place those numbers in certain scenarios and see what the median is. So let's just start with the extreme case scenario, which is that they're all less than 2. Remember, they're just integers. They didn't tell me that they have to be positive. They just said integers. It could be negative. If this is the scenario, then what I'll do is for each scenario, I'll put the median over here. I'll write the median in, in this part. Okay, so the, for the first one, what's the median? In this scenario, since A, B, and C are less than 2, the median is 3. And the median, of course, is just the middle number. So I have to go through this uh, and try to figure out. Well, one thing is for sure that 2 can never be the median, right? Even if I put all three of the numbers below, uh, making them less than 2, 2 is never the median. But I'm pretty sure I can make 4 the median. And I can do that by, first let's just write those numbers in. And then to make 4 the median, I basically just have to put one of the numbers after the 4. So I'll put C here, and then A and B go here. And as you can see, when you do that, the middle number is going to be the 4. You see how that happened there? So in a, in a very similar way, I can make 6 the median. I can make... Uh, 9 the median. And I'll show you how for each. 2, 4, 6, 9, 14. And let's just show you how to put the numbers. We can put A here and B and C we can just put over on this side here. We can make them greater than 14. If you do that and you count what is the middle number, it will be 6. And how to make 9 the median? Well, I think you can probably figure out how in your head already. You just make the numbers all greater than 14, A, B, and C. And if you do that, you'll see that the middle number will be the 9. And there you go. Now it's tempting to say, okay, well, I got four different values, so the answer is four and move on. But just 
take a little bit more time. Take another one minute if you can afford it because four is not the right answer. You can also have medians of A, B, and C. These can also be the middle numbers as follows. If you want A to be the median, put it in the middle and then put B and C on the other side. If you want B to be the median, put it in the middle and put A and C on the other side. If you want C to be the median, put that in the middle and put A and B on the other side. And there you go. That's the way to do it. And therefore, these are also medians. So how many total are possible? Seven. Three, four, six, nine, and then A, B, C. So there's se seven possible uh, values that can be the median of that set. And therefore, number 22, the answer is D. A equilateral triangle and a regular hexagon have equal perimeters. If the area of the triangle is 4, what is the area of the hexagon? So let's draw an equilateral triangle, and first let's discuss this. Now, I'll just call the side length x, and I'm going to need to draw a perpendicular from the top to the bottom like this, and obviously this side will be x over 2 over 2 like that and that's x. Now since this is a perpendicular that's 90 degrees it's an equilateral triangle so these are all 60 degrees and therefore this angle in here is 30. So we have a 30 60 90 triangle and as always the ratio of the sides of a 30 60 90 triangle are 1 for the side opposite 30, 2 for the side opposite the 90 degrees and root 3 for the side opposite the 60, that's the ratio of the sides. So if this is my height, I can use the ratios to figure out h. h over x over 2 will be equivalent to root 3 over 1. And therefore, h is equal to root 3x over 2. And the area, therefore, of this equilateral triangle, which is a, a for area is one half base times height. Well, the base is from there to there, which is x, and the height is from here to here, which is h, but h I just calculated as root 3x over 2. And that area they have told me in the question is equal to 4. So this is my formula. And this basically gives me 16 over root 3 is equal to x squared. So let's just leave it at that. 16 over root 3 is equal to x squared. Okay, so that's about as far as I can go with the triangle. Now I've got to create a hexagon and start discussing the hexagon. So here's the hexagon. And it's a regular hexagon. And what that means is that all the sides are the same. Now the perimeters are equal. So the perimeter of the equilateral triangle was 3x, right? x, x, and x. So the perimeter of the hexagon also has to be 3x. Now there's six sides. So that means each side must be 3x divided by 6, which is x over 2. So each of these sides is x over 2, x over 2, and so on. Now I have to figure out the area. Well, It'll be helpful if I chop it into segments. So I've got two triangles and one rectangle. And then I'll just draw this line right here. And just as before, I've got to do some 30, 60, 90 triangle type stuff. So this is a right angle. And interior angles of a hexagon are 120. So that means this is 120, this is 120, and so on. So since this is a right angle, meaning because that's a rectangle, that means this angle in here is 120 minus 90, which is 30 degrees. And therefore, this angle is 60. So again, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And we can label this, we can label this any way you feel you want. I'll just call it B for base from here to here. And this distance here, I'll just call it h. And then now I'm going to try to get them in terms of x. So first and foremost, b over x over 2 in terms of the 30, 60, 90 will be 1 over 2, right? 
using the same ratios as I did before. And that means that B is equal to X over 4. And then same thing for H. H over X over 2 is equal to root 3 over 2. So that means H is equal to root 3 X over 4. And then now we can figure out the area. The area of this hexagon area will be, first and foremost, this big um, rectangle. That's the most of the area. And that's length times width. So that's going to be x over 2 times 2h. And then we've got two of those triangles, this triangle and this triangle. Those triangles are equal. So 2 times 1 half base times height. We can use this as the base, 2h. And then, of course, this is the height. I know the labeling is kind of confusing, but you understand. OK, now let's plug it all in. So we've got x over 2 times 2 times h. But the 2's cancel, so we just have x times h. And h, I just got over here, is root 3 x over 4. And then plus, well, the 2 times a half cancel. So I just have 2 times h, which is root 3 over 4x, and then b, which is x over 4. So this looks like root 3x squared over 4 plus 2 root 3x squared over 16. And let's see here. I guess I can add the fraction. So 4 root 3x squared plus 2 root 3x squared over 16, and that's going to be 6 root 3 over 16 x squared, but x squared is over here. It's 16 over root 3. And the good news is the root 3's cancel and the 16's cancel, and all you're left with is 6. So that works out very nicely. Number 23, the answer is C. A circle of radius 2 is cut into four congruent arcs. The four arcs are joined to form a star figure shown. What is the ratio of the area of the star figure to the area of the original circle? So they want the ratio of the star figure to the area of the circle. Well, the circle is easy. That's just pi r squared. And r is 2, so it's r squared would be 4, so that's just 4 pi. So all we have to do is figure out the area of the star. How do we figure out the area of that star? You do it by recognizing that if you draw a box like that, it makes it much easier to understand. The area of that star would essentially be, so I'll just write star, the box, that green box, minus these four quarter circles. So minus 4 times pi r squared over 4, right? Each quarter circle is pi r squared divided by 4, but there's four of them. So really, that's pretty straightforward because the distance from here to here is the radius, so that's 2. The distance from here to here is the radius, which is also 2. And similarly, that's 2 and that's 2. So the area of the box is 4 times 4. And then this, well, the 4 is canceled. All you're left with is pi r squared, and r is 2. So that's 16 minus 4 pi. So the area of the star is 16 minus 4 pi. And then this ratio is all over 4 pi. Top and bottom, you can divide through by 4. So that becomes 4 minus pi over pi. And that's it. Number 24, therefore, the answer is A. A square with area 4 is inscribed in a square with area 5 with one vertex of the smaller square on each side of the larger square. A vertex of the smaller square divides a side of the larger square into two segments, one of length A and the other of length B. What is the value of A times B? The square has an area of 4, so that means the side lengths are 2 and 2. That's the only way a square can have an area of 4, 2 times 2. The other square has an area of 5, so that means this is root 5, and this is root 5, the side lengths. 
And we know that this side has been broken up into A and B, so immediately we know that A plus B is equal to root 5. And if you continue labeling A's and B's, this is going to be A, this is going to be B, this is going to be A, and so on, right? So from this triangle right here, you can get a Pythagorean relationship that A squared plus B squared is equal to 2 squared, which is 4. And these two equations are all we need to figure out the value of A times B. Take the first equation and square it. If you do, you get A plus B squared is equal to root 5 squared. Expanding, you get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is equal to 5. And a squared plus b squared, if you regroup it like that, we already know these two are equal to 4. So put 4 here, plus 2ab is equal to 5. Solving, we get 2ab is equal to 5 minus 4, which is 1, and then ab, therefore, is 1 over 2. So in a very elegant way, we got the value for a and b without knowing the actual individual values of a or b. a times b is equal to a half, and therefore number 25, the answer is c.